All right, everybody, we're back from our ads. We want to, of course, thank our amazing sponsors and couldn't do this without them. So we appreciate their support and their help. But let's get into this. This is this is exciting. I'm I'm really eager to learn more about Shande and hear your story. But Shande, I actually like when I was coming up with the script, I wanted to take this a little bit different because I know that you've already given you know, talks, and there's actually even a course out on ACAD where you've talked a little bit about your story. And so I don't want to ask the same questions. I wanted to get into to some of the more nitty gritty of maybe your decisions behind um, your, you know, the, the, the choices that you made along your journey. So this whole episode is an origin story. Uh, it is getting into, you know, a non-traditional journey into programming, but kind of from some other directions, I'm going to say. So put that aside, I want to introduce you a little bit better. Tell everybody a bit about your background, get the, you know, have them get to know you a, a bit better here. So Shonday holds both a bachelor's in business administration and an MBA and previously worked for over a decade in sales and business. So not coding, not programming. And after deciding that she wanted a, a career change, she began teaching herself how to code and made the jump into web development where she now works as a senior software engineer at Netflix, like we said earlier. Um, she's using React, TypeScript, and GraphQL. And on top of her full-time job, she is also building a TypeScript course on ACAD um, that you can go in and find at tsforjs.com. I'll have her talk about that here in a minute. Um, she is a TC39 delegate and is a co-organizer for the React Robins Meetup, where women and non-binary React enthusiasts of like any skill level, which I think is awesome, uh, meet and learn all about JavaScript and other technologies within the React ecosystem. So. You definitely have, even though you didn't start in programming, I love how you've really like encompassed yourself with it and just immersed yourself with as much as you can. So again, thank you for, for being here and um, you know coming on to share your story. We really appreciate it. Um, but like I said, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about what is TS for JS and then once you've kind of shared about that, then we're going to dive into our topic. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I'd love to. So it's ts4jsforjs.com. Um, the full name of the course is uh, TypeScript for JavaScript Developers. And it's not out yet, but if you go to the website, you can um, just put in your email very quick and easy. You can get updates. Um, there will be a an email course that'll be released within the next couple months, and um, you'll be able to walk through how to migrate a JavaScript app to TypeScript. And so that's kind of the theme of the course. And um, the idea came about at my last company, SalesLoft, that I was at, where so to take a step back, the first language that I learned was JavaScript, and then I learned React, which is a JavaScript framework. And I loved it and it fit my needs. I was very interested in web development when I was learning. And what I liked about, one of the things that I liked about JavaScript that I didn't realize I appreciated was the the dynamic coding is um, I'm just like putting stuff in, nobody cares about like the variables and what's gonna happen to them in the end and all that stuff. There's no type safety, I'm just like YOLO, like just, code <laughs> and <laughs> who cares if it breaks anything like i'm just this is just for me and typescript i was just like no 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 because this seems like a lot of rules and a lot of hassle for a little reward so no 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 and um my one of the people that i worked with the lead on um the or well, the architect on the team um was really advocating for typescript and he did a typescript like little mini course for us at work and then advocated for us to um, migrate our app which was actually on angular angular one at the time and we were in the process of migrating that to react and he was like let's just go for typescript like let's just go full blown into typescript and we were like Oh no, man, like this is crazy. Okay. <laughs> and um, I ended up like 
he was so enthusiastic about it. So I, I give him credit for just like being who he is. Um, I'm very like character, like I'm, I'm all about like people's personalities and things like that. So um, just his enthusiasm was, uh, it, it made me much more interested in TypeScript. But as I started to use it, I was like, oh, this is the point. Like now I get it. Now I understand why as a scaling organization, why you need TypeScript. But there were a lot of hiccups that came about because there was so much stuff that was going on and so much old code and like all right, like the code was already built using a lot of um, kind of outdated practices and things. I wanted to make this course so that I could help other people who are in that situation because most companies, um, large companies that have um, react really most large companies that have any type of front end um, are migrating to TypeScript and um I want to help people get excited about it, just like I, you know, somebody was there to get ex help me get excited about it, and also somebody to help understand what gotchas could you, okay. you could come across and help to avoid those. I love that because I think the best teachers are the ones who can empathize with the student, right? And you can you can almost like project what questions they're going to ask, even though it's an online course. You've been through it. You've gone through it, so you know. Okay. They're going to be asking these questions, and that's awesome. I think it sounds like a great course. So, congratulations, though, too. I used to work at thinkster.io, and I was part of that process of like helping people make online courses. And there is so much work and effort and energy that goes into those things. So, really, like, congratulations for just putting in that time and having something to show for it. Awesome. Thank you. But yeah. So I okay. Double down on that real okay. quick. She didn't just like decide to make a course. You made it a course about TypeScript. And right. that is not always the easiest subject, even for seasoned developers who've been using TypeScript for years. So thank you for helping us all move into the, you know, 2023. Whenever this comes out, I don't know, maybe it's this year. Is it later this year or next year? Um, Probably early next year. So there'll be um, the, the email courses that come out. And so those will be little freebies that will be available before the course. And that'll be um, by the end of 2023. The actual full-blown course will be sometime next year. You did bring up another great point, Eric. Um, we were talking before we started recording. And um, I was mentioning that the, my favorite way of learning is by teaching. And so the, like I, I would have chosen something, like the stickiest thing, the hardest thing, as something that I want to know more about, that was one of the reasons why I chose it is so that I could get um, as in, like as in depth of knowledge that it would take for me to be able to articulate it and like teach somebody and enable them to be able to um, go off and do it themselves. That's the kind of knowledge that I wanted for TypeScript that I that I still want for um, nice. TypeScript. So that was part of it. So yeah, the teachers <laughs> always learn the most, don't they? Yeah, we need like so one of those true. Jim Cramer sound effects or whatever. That's just like listeners. This is a <laughs> insight that you need to remember. You know, what? I think I think we should uh, start calling them pro tips. I have this favorite you YouTube go. channel, and that's what they do. They've got like pro tip, but they make it funny because it's like pro tip forty seven thousand five hundred and thirty two. <laughs> so it's, it's awesome. Like what I put my invoices at when I invoice people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I love it. Okay, so Shonday. I want to go back, at, you know, at the beginning of your bio, I was mentioning how you have multiple degrees, including an MBA. Like you obviously spent a good amount of your earlier career in sales and business, not programming, not computers. But I want to know, like, here you are, you're, you're in high school, early college. What was it that drew you to sales and business in the first place why did you choose to go that direction story time <laughs> okay so um growing up i was like always into art and very um like i was always drawing i love to write i was a like poet from a very young age like i loved rhymes and things like that i loved writing stories um and what that blossomed into by the time I was in high school was I wanted to be a fashion designer and I was like drawing clothes. I designed my prom dress. I was like, I had all these different designs and I was like, this is what I want to do. I'm trying to immerse myself in it. Now, my mom was at the time a guidance counselor 
at a high school. Her big value statement, like her thing ever since forever, she's always had this one mission is to help underrepresented people in education. And my dad was telling me when he first met her, she used to just like outside, my mom has more degrees than any anybody. She's she's doctor person. And um, she used to go to jails and like, like just talk to people and just be like, you know, um, this is, these are the things I help them work out. This, these are the things that you could do in your life. And these are opportunities that are open for you and just like help to uplift people, but also like help them with a plan for things. So her dissertation, when she got her doctorate was on how to lower the dropout rate for black males in um, high schools. Safe to say that like, there was no way that her first daughter, her straight A student, her first child, was going to go to school for fashion design. So like when I told her that, I was <laughs> I was like I'm going to go to FIT in New York, the Fashion Institute, and I'm going to major in fashion design. And she was like, "Shani, if you go to school for fashion design, I'm not paying for your degree." And I was like, "Okay, cool. So I'll figure something else out." So <laughs> I went back to the drawing board. I decided that I wanted to have a fashion design business. And so that was my, um, this is where the whole entrepreneurship thing kicked in. And um, undergrad, I went to Temple University in Philly for entrepreneurship. So they had the best entrepreneurship degree um, program at, in. it was like number seven for undergrad, number four for graduate school. But like my degree, my undergrad degree is entrepreneur, business management with a concentration in entrepreneurship two things happen. So one, um, when you graduate with an entrepreneurship degree, like in my head, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to be Oprah. Like as soon as I graduate, I'm just going to like have a business. Yeah. And it's going to be successful. Yay. Go me. Like <laughs> now I know what to do. Like I'm going to make a business plan and everybody's just going to like flock around and buy my stuff. I didn't have an idea by the time I graduated. So there was like no business to even fail. The only jobs that you could really get with an entrepreneurship degree are like basically door to door sales um, or like all the stuff that comes up on in Indeed is like Cutco or like some weird scam and things like that. So that was one thing is like, like sales was the only option. The other reason I got like kind of passionate about sales was one of my professors of my entrepreneurship, my first entrepreneurship course, he was an adjunct professor, never worked for anybody in his life. He was like, the best way to understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur is to start um, a commission only sales job. And it's kind of like owning your own business. You get to see all of the risks that come along with it. You figure out how to talk to people, how to sell your stuff, how to hustle, all that good stuff. So not only was sales the only thing that I could really get, but also the thing that at that time I was like, okay, this is how I'm going to practice my craft until I figure out what kind of business. I want to start. So that was the kickoff into sales. And so my first job in sales was, it was hundred percent travel. And I was going, uh, it, I was tr going to trade shows and fairs selling basically things you could see on QVC that like the things that I would sell the most of were um, this nail polish design pen and this lotion that was like way super expensive, but I sold so much of it because I was like, I was, I was determined. I was like, I'm get all these good sales skills. And, you know, that was the way I made my money. So, um, so yeah, to answer your question, that was, uh, that was my entry to sales. That's very interesting. Um, I can tell that you have that charisma to be able to sell, to be able to like sort of get people to get out of their own minds and, and come look at what it is you want. I almost feel like that might be a really useful skill. And I think we might even talk about that more later, but it feels like anyone would benefit from this ability to sell you know as a software engineer i have to sell my ideas all the time i have to sell the way that i built something to my coworkers, and and i have to sell why we may not hit a deadline sometimes <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you could benefit from well and and that makes me wonder uh this next question like what how how did you feel about that job and how did how, how did it feel to be a salesperson day to day what were some of the things that you were experiencing at the time that made you feel like maybe there's something beyond sales that you want to get to at the time it felt great like it felt like this is the first step into the thing that i really want to do and um when you're you know 22 
that is a normal feeling is like, okay, I'm at the, I'm at the very beginning and there's so much 